After a disastrous Sunday for Mercedes, seven-time world champion Lewis Hamilton is unhappy with the team's performance. Throughout the weekend, Hamilton struggled to find pace in the W15 and could only qualify eighth with his teammate one spot ahead. Mercedes claimed to have finally gotten rid of the problems that ailed their last challenger, especially the unstable rear. Still, a quick glance at this year's Saudi Grand Prix reveals that Hamilton was struggling with rear stability again. The team's technical director, James Allison, was keen to point out the work the team had done over the winter break to make the car more predictable. But according to Lewis Hamilton, the problem still persists. A big focus has been on improving the previous car's unpredictable rear axle. We have worked hard to ensure that both axles, but particularly the rear axle, retain better control of the tyre than on the W14. There's also been some housekeeping on areas in which we had room for improvement, including the DRS effect and pit stop performance. We feel like we have had a good winter, but F1 is a relative game and only time will tell how big a step we've made. We're focused on getting the most from the car we launch, but we are excited by the development rate that will follow as the regulations are still young and opportunities abound. Hamilton's troubles were increased after the Briton was forced to not pit under the safety car and lost places in that scenario. In contrast, his teammate and others around him benefited from the relatively short pit stop. Hamilton was quite vocal on the radio, commenting on how their car is much slower than everyone else's, especially on the straights, and after the race, talked to the media about the state of the W15. The car is relatively good in the low speed and not so bad in the medium speed, but in the high speed we are miles off. It was like I was in a different category when I was going through the high speed between the other guys around me. It's frustrating for sure to be in three years in a row in almost the same position. It's definitely tough, but we will get our heads down and keep working away. And I know everyone back at the factory is pushing as hard as they can. Hamilton was stuck behind the McLaren of Lando Norris throughout the ending stages of the race. Though he seemed to catch him quicker than expected, he could not commit to an overtake as Norris would move away faster on the straights. Hamilton added that the car still has a lot of potential and that improvements can be made in some places. He demanded that the team bring significant changes to the vehicle over the next few months and he emphasised the work the other teams have done to improve their concepts. We've definitely got to make some big changes, he said. We haven't made big enough changes, perhaps. If you look at the three teams ahead of us, they still have different concepts to where we are in some areas. So we've got some performance to add, that's for sure. Hamilton finished the race in ninth place and his teammate George Russell, who ended the race in P6, also faced similar issues in his car. He was very close to Fernando Alonso throughout the race, but like Lewis, he could not overtake him due to the high-speed difference between the two cars. It was a long evening out there, Russell said. I spent nearly 40 laps within 1.5 seconds of Fernando Alonso, but couldn't get past. I had a slippery car on the straights, but I couldn't get close enough in the high speed to give him any real pressure. P6 was likely a fair result in the end, and it's clear that we haven't found the sweet spot with this car just yet. Overall, though, we need to find a bit more performance. We've seen potential and pace in the car, but we haven't shown it when it's mattered. We need to understand why that is and improve ahead of Melbourne. As we've seen, the pecking order behind the Red Bulls is very close, so we need to get on top of it. There's lots of work to do, but I believe in the team. After qualifying, Hamilton went into more detail about another issue that has plagued the car for a while now, which Mercedes cannot eliminate. He explained that the car was bouncing too much and this was hindering performance. His confidence in the car is low due to this and he must always correct for the issue. He further talked about how Russell feels more confident in the car and was hence able to get better results, but still, this is something the team needs to work on. We've got to fix it. That's like three years in a row. There are so many elements of this car which are better than the 2023 car, he added. It's just we're being hindered by the bouncing that we have and the bouncing we have through turns 6, 7, 8, 9 to 10, which I think probably affected George and it's something that they've not been able to fix. We made some changes overnight, and this morning the car felt so much better, I was regaining this confidence again. And then when we get to qualifying, it disappears again. But George was doing a great job. He's a lot more comfortable in the car, and I'm a bit similar to the last couple of years, I would say. 
We've tried every setup change. We can't get rid of it, he went on. It's difficult to explain it. We had some bouncing in Bahrain, but nowhere near as intense as here. But that first sector is super high speed. A lot of yaw in the car and a lot of lateral load. And the bouncing really offsets the car quite a bit. Imagine when the car goes up and down in the back, your balance shifts forwards and rearwards. If you're doing that at 160, 170 millitimif, correcting that each time. You know, the others, Max Verstappen, is flat through 6, 7 and 8 and the balance is just stable and that's what we're working towards. Hamilton is clearly not happy with the current setup for the W15 and it will take some time for him to get used to the new car. This has happened previously as well, where it seems Russell is the faster driver at the start of the season and then Hamilton bounces back. Still, with the current situation of the W15, they will have trouble competing for podiums. Team boss Toto Wolff was also not happy with the performance of the W15 and stated that the team had learned a lot from these two weeks and now needs to ensure this learning translates into performance for future races. Today was not a good day for us. It is clear that we are struggling with the car in the high-speed corners. We are competitive elsewhere, but in three corners here, we were losing about half a second. It was therefore incredibly difficult for the drivers to attack with. Wolf continued, there is so much learning we can take from these first two race weekends. We need to get our heads down to analyze, understand and improve. It's clear that we've got a lot of work to do, but these tough days make you better. Everyone is committed to getting the car into a better place and we look forward to coming back stronger in Australia. With the Australian Grand Prix two weeks away, it will be interesting to see what improvements the team brings to their car. Last year, Mercedes was able to develop its car much better than the rest of the pack, and it constantly competed for the podium spots. Their team is no slouch and they know how to build a fast car. All they need to do right now is work on the car's main issues. They need to make the car more stable and fix the porpoising the team has fought with since 2022. Both drivers stated that the car was much better to drive than last year and Lewis even said that they were better than the rest at lower speed corners and that they needed to work at a straight line speed to maximise their pace. The team will be looking to bounce back in Australia but it is too early in the season to know how the car will perform at that circuit as even between the first two circuits we saw a significant variance in the way the W15 behaves. What do you think of Hamilton's comments? Will Mercedes be able to improve their car or will they remain slower than the likes of McLaren, Ferrari and Aston Martin? Let us know in the comments below. As always, like this video and subscribe to this channel for more Formula One news as soon as it comes out.